This video is going to teach you all about the law of conservation of mass. Before we talk about the law of conservation of mass, we need to look at the anatomy of a chemical equation, which basically is another way of saying how the chemical equation looks and what the parts are called. So first part is there's ingredients. So ingredients are this side over here before the arrow. And the ingredients, the chemistry word we use for that is reactants. Basically the reactants are what we're starting with before the reaction. On the other side of the arrow we have what we call the products, which are just the results of the reaction, what were made during the reaction. Now there's a couple other terms that we need to make sure we know. One of them down here is coefficient. And here's how you spell that. I know the C got cut off, but it's coefficient, just like this. And the coefficient tells you how many there are of that molecule. So if we look right here at this coefficient, this big number 2, that 2 is telling you that there are two H2 molecules. Then there's a plus sign, so plus means that it's reacting with something else. So here this is saying there's two H2 molecules reacting with one O2 molecule. Because there's no coefficient here, we just assume that it's 1. Now when we look at our arrow here, our arrow means yields or produces. So the arrow is saying this is where the chemical reaction happens and it's going to produce our products, which are over here on the other side of the arrow. So looking at the products, it's saying that the products in this reaction are two H2O molecules. We got that coefficient 2 H2O. So that's the molecule that's being produced. Now one more thing that you need to look at, it's kinda hard to see on this one because the numbers all look like they're the same size, but in an actual equation they're not. So I'm gonna rewrite it real quick. Okay, so I know my handwriting's messy, but really over here, this 2H2O, it should look like this, 2H2. And see how that 2 is littler? We call that a subscript. It's smaller, and it's kind of below where the line of the letter is. So this one's a subscript also, this O2. And over here on H2O, the little 2 on the H is a subscript. And the subscript is telling you the number of atoms that are present per molecule. So if we look at H2O here, it's saying that there's two hydrogens, and there's nothing here, so we assume it's one, one oxygen in the H2O molecule. That's what the subscripts tell you. All right, I know all those coefficients and subscripts can get confusing, so we're just going to go through this quick learning check to see if we can figure out how many atoms of each element are in the following molecules. So if we look at the first one, H2SO4, and I've written it out with the numbers the right size. So if we look at how many hydrogens are in that molecule. So there's two, because we have that little subscript two, two hydrogens. Then we look at how many sulfurs there's one sulfur, so there's no subscript. Then for oxygens, there's four oxygens. It makes sense. Okay, and then if we look at the second one, this one's a little trickier. For calcium, we've got one. For oxygen, this is kind of like algebra. If you have parentheses like this, that means that whatever's outside of them, so in this case the little two, goes to everything in the parentheses. So this is actually O, there's two of them, because that little two outside the parentheses. And that two also goes to the H inside the parentheses. So in this one, it's got one calcium, two oxygens, and two hydrogens. Okay, and then let's look at the last one, our three H2O. So it's three coefficient H2 subscript O. So we've got two hydrogens per molecule here. But then we've got three molecules. So you multiply three times two, and that would give you six hydrogens. Okay, then we look at our O. Got one O per molecule, three molecules, so one times three is three oxygens. Oh, and I actually skipped number three, sorry. So number three is pretty easy, right? One Na, one Cl. That's it, straightforward. 
If you didn't get all those answers on the last slide, I know my handwriting was super messy. Here's the answers to those last four learning check questions. All right, now we can finally get to the law of conservation of mass. So the law of conservation of mass basically states that mass cannot be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. However, mass can be converted from one form to another. And the way you have to do this is add up the number of atoms of each element in the reactants. Remember, reactants means ingredients. And make sure that that's equal to the number of atoms in the products. Remember, the products are what you made, your result. And also, the mass of the reactants, if you were to weigh their mass, that would have to equal the mass of the products. And you'll see that in your lab that we do this week. Right, here's a great example of law of conservation of mass. So I've got reactants on this side, products on that side, so we're just going to split it down the middle, and we want to count and make sure the same number of atoms are on each side because the mass is conserved, the number of atoms is conserved. So we've got our potassiums here in white, so on the reactant side there's one, two, so two potassiums. On the product side, there's one, two, two potassiums. Good so far. Okay, then we've got our H2O. So the O part is these big red ones. I know that because there's only one, right, not two. So on this side, we've got two O. And then on the product side, we've got one, two, two O's. Still good, still equal. Last thing we got to count up is our hydrogen, so that's these little blue ones. So there's one, two, three, four in the reactants, four hydrogens, and one, two, three, four in the products, four hydrogens. So we know, yes, they are equal as far as atoms. Then you would also check by using a scale that the mass of the reactants was also equal to the mass of the products and that's how law of conservation of mass works. So here's the kind of question you might see on a test having to do with the law of conservation of mass. So it says, in the procedure shown above, a calcium chloride solution is mixed with a sodium sulfate solution to create the product shown. Which of the following is illustrated by this activity? Well, it's kind of an easy question because obviously what we're talking about is law of conservation of mass, so that's the answer. But kind of the more important thing to see here is this over here is what we start with, right? So that's our reactants. Then we do the reaction here, it's mixing everything up, and then they're weighing the flask again, and that's your products. And it's showing on the scale the mass is equal both times. All right, here's a little more difficult question that you might see uh, talking about the law of conservation of mass. So this one wants to know which of the following equations is correctly showing the law of conservation of mass. So on your paper, write down those four equations and then check, just like we did, count up on each side how many of each of atoms of each element are on the product side and the reactant side. And if they match, you know it does correctly show the law of conservation of mass. Once you finish, you can check these with your teacher. Here's a little different kind of question that you might see with the law of conservation of mass. So here we've got calcium, 64 grams of calcium, combining with zinc carbonate, 192 grams, and that is going through some sort of chemical reaction and producing 152 grams of calcium carbonate plus an uh, unknown amount of zinc and they want to know, according to the law of conservation of mass, how much zinc was present in the zinc carbonate. So what they want to know is over here, how many grams of zinc? So think about that, see if you can figure out which one of the answers it is, and then check it with your teacher.